It is common for photographers to say that gear doesn't matter. The reason they say that is because even with a bad camera, a good photographer can still create a great photo. One that understands his camera perfectly, its strengths and limitation, has a good eye and knows how to compose well his shot, still has the potential to create greatness. So my question is, can we get a camera that is so bad, it's literally impossible to get a good shot with it? Well, after scrolling through TikTok, I got an ad for a certain retro camera. Now, if you go on Alibaba, you can literally get this camera for $7. This is exactly what it looks like. It's literally a pink children's toy camera. Now, if we take a quick little rundown on the usability of this camera, the only good thing this camera has, which is the bare minimum for a photographer to ask for, is a screen to compose your shot. Although the viewing angle is terrible and the screen is small, it's usable enough to compose a shot. Something funny with this camera is that it shows autofocus lines before taking a shot. But the camera is actually unable to change focus at all. To be fair though, just like a pinhole lens, it doesn't need to focus because everything is already in focus. There are no manual settings on this camera, nor is there a way to change exposure. Everything is on auto. The body is made out of cheap plastic and there is a grip on it, but it's so small, I don't think it's even worth trying to use it. It does have the ability to zoom digitally, but considering the terrible image quality that it already has and low pixel count, I wouldn't even consider it. Although it doesn't specify the focal length of the lens, after using it for a while, I would say it's close to around 60 mm in full frame equivalent. Although it claims it has 16 megapixels, I doubt that's truly the case. After pixel peeping a bit, you can see massive lines of pixels clearly showing that this can't be more than one megapixel. It also has a lens that is small and made out of plastic. The dynamic range on this thing is terrible. It's so bad that when I took a photo directly at the sun, the camera got confused and the overexposed sun became a black dot, which I found very particular. The colors are whack and the auto white balance feature isn't always accurate. The noise on this camera is awful and there are color artifacts everywhere. This camera has massive in-camera processing, there are lines from digital sharpening everywhere, and many objects look muddy from the internal denoising it has. Lastly, the sensor is unsurprisingly tiny, which is why there's no bokeh at all. Before we keep going, let's go through a small history lesson. The year is 1975, and this guy named Steve Sasson, an engineer at Kodak, is tasked to mess around with a CCD, a technology that has the potential to create a digital camera. And so he actually does it. He invents the first digital camera. To which management at Kodak replied by saying, that's cute, but... Don't tell anyone about it. To put you into context, in 1975, Kodak was absolutely dominating the camera and film industry. They hold 90% of all sales on film stocks. But this also meant that if they started selling digital cameras, they would lose film stock sales, which is where most of the profit would come from. And so they decided to not move forward with digital technology so they could keep selling more film. If we fast forward to the early 2000s, now the vast majority of consumers are using digital point and shoot cameras because of their low cost and ease of use, while the professionals are still using film for its superior image quality and manual settings. So why am I talking about this? Well, you see, this is the point in the history of photography where image quality actually went down. This whole time from the invention of photography to that point, imaging technology had only gotten better and better and had reached a point as to how good images could look. But the moment that camera manufacturers tried to transition from film to digital, they were working with a new and undeveloped technology that was inferior in image quality to its tried and true predecessor. Eventually, digital actually surpassed film in both sales and image quality, and Kodak lost most of its business because it decided to not move forward with the digital camera. So if we go back to our pink little camera, this is exactly what it tries to recreate. You see, this camera was created to be intentionally bad, just so it can recreate the early 2000s digital photography vibe. That was its original target audience. It is the same idea as shooting film and having a sense of nostalgia just because of the overall look of film. Whether the shot was taken 40 years ago or 2 weeks ago, we still associate its look with nostalgia as that was the technology that older generations had. 
but in our case, this camera uses terrible digital image quality as a way to give you a sense of nostalgia. It just uses a different era of photography, the one where image quality plummeted. I mean, videos from this camera look like the stuff I used to do when I was 11 years old. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Okay, so with that being said, is it possible to create something nice with it? Like I said from the beginning of the video, if you understand the strengths and limitations of your camera, you can still come up with something good. So let's put this to the test. So understanding that the dynamic range was terrible, I needed to take advantage of high contrast scenes instead. The noise was awful, so using bright spaces was kind of a must. But after shooting with it, I noticed how as long as I had a good composition and a well-lit scene, you could still pull off something nice. Or so I thought. If you look through the screen of the camera, because of its small form factor, most images wouldn't look that bad. But when you bring them to the computer, that is when you see that this camera has done every photography sin possible. The overall idea is to use everything that is bad about this camera to your advantage. And so, this pink children's toy camera strives to make the mundane look as if it came from two decades ago. But two decades ago, photographs looked like trash. I mean, this camera just doesn't have the capabilities to make a perfect shot. The only way I could make images look kinda nice was if I shrunk the photo to a small size, so it could hide every mistake that the camera had done. So achieving a technically perfect shot with this camera is impossible. And because of its terrible noise performance and muddy look, it's hard to make something look aesthetically pleasing. The way the camera is designed to be used is to capture moments with friends, so you and your friends can look back at the moments with nostalgia. But if you're trying to make art or a powerful photograph or something awe-inspiring, then it just can't do it. So to people that say that gear doesn't matter, I would still say that the saying is still true. As long as you know what you're doing with what you have, you can still make great stuff. But to answer the question, can we have a camera that is so bad it's literally impossible to take a good shot with it? Well, let's just say I think I found a contender that fits that bill. Even with every photography skill available, if your camera's purpose was to literally recreate photos from the worst era of photography, then yes. It's a camera in which you can't take a good photo. Or at least, not a photograph worthy for the average person. 